This interview focuses on distressing topics such as the premature death of infants and young children. Viewer discretion is advised. There is still very little known about sudden infant death syndrome or SIDS and sudden unexplained death in childhood or SUDC. However, a recent research report and a collection of video footage taken from crib cameras have helped to shed light on one potential cause. According to researchers at NYU Langone Health, who monitored video footage of the deaths of seven sleeping toddlers, seizures during sleep are a potential cause of SIDS or SUDC. Scientists have also found that children with a history of fever-related seizures was around 10 times more likely among the children who died suddenly. Other recent studies by NYU and a team at Boston Children's Hospital have looked for genetic issues related to SUDC, finding that some children harbored mutations in genes associated with heart and brain disorders, irregular heartbeats, and epilepsy. Joining us now to discuss the latest research related to unexplained deaths in children is Mary Margaret Murphy, Executive Director of Baby Breaths Canada, and a researcher in this field, Dr. Richard Goldstein. Ms. Murphy and Dr. Goldstein, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for inviting us. Uh, let's start with a little background information. Ms. Murphy, could you explain the difference between SIDS and SUDC and tell us just how common these unexplained deaths among children are? Well, um, SIDS is usually uh, for children or babies under the age of one. Um, SUDC is children one years of age and older. Um, they're more common than what people expect. Um, and I think here in Canada, I know um, my colleague, Dr. Goldstein's in Boston, but here in Canada, um, we're seeing um, uh, SIDS is actually more classified as undetermined here in Canada. So the numbers just aren't accurate yet because there's two different ways of the autopsy or the coroner's office in classifying the, um, the, the situation. So whether it's SIDS or undetermined, um, but roughly for, uh, SIDS cases, um, I want to say, I want to say, uh, Rick, I'm sorry, I'm like drawing a blank on that one, the, 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 the statistics for SIDS here in Canada. I'm not sure if you're... So Dr. I can say, I can speak for the U.S. statistics, yeah. which it's really all across uh, developed nations, if we can call them that. And uh, the reason for that is that uh, uh, an autopsy is required. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, it um, countries that are lower resourced uh, really just can't have SIDS rate. In the United States, it's one in a thousand births. And if you look at all pediatric death, this is United States, it's a little bit different than Canada, I would guess. 10% of all deaths in children uh, from birth to 18 remain without an explanation. Mm -hmm. okay. And the, the, the artifact of SUDC is really because with, with the success of back to sleep, the focus on the field really shifted towards understanding risk factors for infants, where really 90% of SIDS happens by the age of six months. And the definition shifted to under a year. And no one put in anything for over a year. Mm -hmm. and for decades, no one was looking at these deaths at all. Right. Um, and in our work, we found them to be incredibly informative for most of the major research trends that that we, we participate in. Yeah, and I think here in Canada, I was just going to say in Canada, it's uh, three deaths out of a thousand okay. is uh, since related. Uh, and Dr. Goldstein, these recent studies, they provided us with some of the first direct evidence of a seizure link um, yeah. to these deaths. How common are seizures among infants and young children? Um, can you maybe elaborate on that a little bit for us? We have about a minute before we go to break. Yeah. Uh, so in some way, so one of the problems is that these are unwitnessed deaths. Everyone's asleep by and large. Mm -hmm. And so we didn't really know what's what happened. But we have research in serotonin. There are serotonin abnormalities in about 40 percent of babies dying from SIDS. There are, re, there are serotonin abnormalities in people that die from epilepsy. Mm -hmm. There are changes in the brains of about 40 percent of SIDS and SUDC children 
that are otherwise only described in temporal lobe epilepsy, changes in the hippocampus of the brain. And then in our work on genetics, we found that about half the variants we find in our cohort, we study about 600 families, half the variants are epilepsy-related variants. Mm -hmm. so uh, before the break, Dr. Goldstein, you were talking about seizures uh, and epilepsy. And, and yeah, so just how common are seizures, I, I guess, from any cause uh, among young children? I don't know what that statistic is. It's not, I mean, let me say certain things that are that are especially relevant. Yeah. So, um, in, so one of the issues, when you talk to people about SIDS, they'll say, oh, it's about prone sleep, sleep position. Mm -hmm. Thinking that these babies are very dependent and you put them in an at-risk position. If you look at the older kids who you know, can sit up and walk and run around, then the, the found position for those babies is those toddlers and young children is also in the prone position. And related to epilepsy, if you have epilepsy, you have a greater than 20 fold increased risk of dying in your sleep and mm -hmm. they're all found in the prone position. So we've, and we've when had you say these commonality prone, for a long just, time. Just when you say prone position, can you just explain to viewers what that means? Uh, face down. Okay. Face down, right? Yeah. So the sleep advice is to, to take your baby and sleep them face up, back yep. to sleep. Yeah. Uh, so, Ms. Murph. Ms. Murphy, these findings wouldn't have been possible without scientists being able to analyze footage taken from crib cameras. Would you say that parents of young infants should have a crib cam camera installed, either that be for the potential prevention of SIDS or in the event that the worst does happen to potentially help researchers towards finding more answers on why this happens? Uh, you know, that that it is kind of a difficult question to answer because you take in, into consideration the cost of mm -hmm. something like that for parents. And not all parents are able to afford um, having cameras set up, you know, in the in the room in order to monitor the babies. However, it does really give parents peace of mind. And, and there is a lot of products out there with different price ranges. Um, and, and of course, we're coming up to March where it's Safe Sleep Week. And, um, you know, the theme this year, I'm going to give it away a little bit, is decorate the room and not the crib. And mm -hmm. so, you know, looking at, uh, you know, I think the key thing for families and for peace of mind is, yes, you know, having a monitor in the room can certainly help. And then also would help researchers, you know, further on um, in their in their research. And, and Dr. Goldstein, she mentioned decorating the room and not the crib. We know that research into SIDS and SUDC has uncovered various other risk factors, uh, as well as some preventative measures that parents can take, such as placing an infant on their back. Uh, are there any other preventative measures that you would recommend or any other risk factors that parents should look out for um, on SIDS and SUDC? Um, well, one, one issue that's especially important and it gets back to brain mechanisms is tobacco. Mm. So, you know, I, I think um, we're very careful about how we advise against cessation of tobacco, but basically you can calculate by cigarette number of cigarettes smoked that the risk for SIDS goes up. And we think that that, um, that affects neural pathways that could potentially suppress seizures, but mm -hmm. also are involved in the development of the brain and the vulnerabilities that allow these kind of modest threats to then become lethal for these babies. And yeah, and do we have any under understand? Is that like exposure to secondhand smoke or presence in a particular space? Uh, have we gotten more information about that? We don't. To we don't really know. When we bring it down to um, to a m microscopic level, uh, nicotine effect affects acetylcholine pathways, and so we think that that's detrimental prenatally and then postnatally as well. Uh, and we have about a minute left. Ms. Murphy, what advice would you give to new parents who are nervous about the possibility of such a tragedy happening to their child? Well, you know, first and foremost, I always um, have told families to, you know, do their homework, 
um, be aware of, you know, the safe sleep guidelines. Um, if you follow those and, and I know, you know, it, it's just a small portion, um, because, um, Dr. Goldstein has always said SIDS, um, is an undiagnosed illness and we're still, you know, looking at trying to find those answers, but in the meantime, um, you know, uh, you know, and you, you had asked about, you know, monitor devices, um, something like that. Um, I know, uh, my niece, you know, she's got monitors and she's, you know, very much monitoring when, you know, the kids are going to sleep. So, mm -hmm. um, it gives her peace of mind and, um, you know, so for families, it's just being aware, mm -hmm. um, and just, uh, understanding the risk and but not worrying about it and 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 just you know um you know looking after their baby as best they can thank you very much both for your time you're welcome thank you.